Okay, so I'm just gonna get right into the video. I don't wanna do an intro or anything. The video is exactly what it says. You know, I lost my virginity at eight years old to a boy. And when I was eight years old, it was weird because this is the time I was already kissing. I kissed the young girl, but I was mainly doing these acts with the boy. And, you know, people always talk about when they were a child, they could see the signs of how they were gay and how they were lesbian or anything like that. And I always push back on it because if you were to hear my story, you would immediately, you're immediately going to think these things. Um, but I also want to get this story to see if, do you think I'm gay now? Or do you think these things, or would you say that these are childhood signs? Um, I really want to hear, have this conversation. I really want to talk about it. Um, so yes, I did do oral with the young boy. I did do top bottom stuff with the young boy. I was completely doing these acts as an eight year old boy. And I, I carried this on until I was 11 and I did the kissing and all that. I just, I, I didn't know it wasn't normal. It was a normal thing to me. I, I was always very into that kind of stuff. Um, and then around 11 years old, I just stopped it completely. You know, I started playing football and stuff like that. And uh, I, I won't lie, I was attracted. I was attracted to women for the most part. I was attracted to little girls, but I always had friends that were girls, right? I couldn't necessarily get with them or anything like that, maybe because I was too ugly or whatever. I mean, we were children, who knows? Um, I remember when I was trying to play with dolls or stuff like that, that my father would come up to me and be like, don't you play with dolls? You don't need to be playing with dolls. You need to stop hanging out with girls. And my father was just that way. And I thought I, I really stopped doing that for the most part until I got into high school. But for the most part, I just hung out with I just hung out with boys. I did football, weightlifting, stuff like that. And when I turned 13 is when I started getting into adult content, you know, looking at websites and stuff like that, which I will say it is much different back then than it does today. I mean, it was rampant with child stuff back then, but I was also a child. So I was only looking at kids my own age back then. So it was normal. And now they kind of throw it behind the scenes and stuff like that. Thank God. But back then it was normal. So I don't know like how bad it really was back then. Um, but I really got into adult content and I was playing football, like I said, and everything. And for the most part, I was really just attracted to women. Like I said, I had a lot of friends that were girls. And uh, a lot of people would say, not really people at my school, but it would come off that I was very feminine, right? That I would act kind of feminine, especially when I was around other girls. And I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to be feminine in any way or any form. I was just being myself. Um, I just grew up a certain way. I didn't grow up to be real masculine. And I think maybe because my father was so masculine uh, that I, I just didn't enjoy it. He was such a mean person to me sometimes. I just hated that whole macho, I'm going a, I'm to a beat you up, this kind of stuff. Um, and I just hated hearing that from my father. So I think I just took on a more feminine role back then. And I remember I would meet people who were uh, who came out as gay when I was in high school and stuff like that. And I I sometimes got jealous not because they were gay. I got jealous because they could make so many friends so easily with girls and the girls loved them. And so there was a part of me that also was mixing in there. And sometimes I just really wanted to be friends with girls, but I couldn't help myself. I am a, uh, what you would call, I uh, say a hopeless romantic. When I would be friends with girls, I couldn't help but want to date them because it was like dating your friend. Like you, I, I liked, you know, I wanted to do have that physical intimacy, you know, with women. Um, not necessarily, you know, do those kind of things, but hugging, kissing, that's just stuff I really enjoyed. I always saw it in movies and stuff like that. And I didn't get any affection from home. I never hugged my mom. I never hugged my father um, or anything like that. And so just any kind of touching was all brand new to me, you know, especially because I only hung out with men. So I didn't do that kind of stuff. So I always wanted that women. So I would have a lot of friends that were girls and I would love, I would enjoy being their friend, but I always find myself falling in love with them because I wanted that intimacy. And, you know, when I did have girlfriends um, and stuff like that, it took so much pressure off of me. It took a lot of pressure off me to be able to um, have a girlfriend. That way I could be friends with girls because there was no pressure to date them because I already had a girlfriend. And this went on for a while. Anytime I got a girlfriend, it was like a relief because it's like, yes, now I can be friends with girls that I don't have to worry about um, anything going on because I'm not trying to date them. And, so as I got older, um, I think once I finally graduated high school is when the, it really took on um, how feminine I was starting to become. Even guys, guys I knew, they would say, like, how do you look at your nails? And I would do this. You know, I would look at my nails like like this. Right. And stuff like that. And they'd be like, oh, that's very feminine. And I'd be like, I didn't know that was a feminine thing. And I as I continued to get older, um, I started to 
Uh, you know, I really started getting jealous of people who were flamboyant. I wasn't necessarily jealous of people who were homosexual. It was wearing colored fingernails, right? Wearing certain colors, acting a certain way. I always was jealous of that because there was an innate part of me that wanted to be feminine, that wanted to kind of act flamboyant. I always find it kind of cool. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense. I find it kind of cool. I find it kind of freeing. And that's something I want to get into here a little bit later. Um, but then once I um, got into college, I once again had a lot of friends that were women. Um, but that intimacy part of me couldn't be friends with them because I was like, no, nah, I can't. At the time I got to date them. There was one point that I had a friend who was a girl that I really liked being her friend, but I got pressured. You know, my friend was like, you should tell her you like her or this or that. And I was like, I really didn't want to mess up the friendship. I just wanted to be her friend. Like, even if I wasn't going to get to date her, I was cool with that. But every time I tried to do that, you felt the pressure of needing to get with these girls. And there was a lot of me that just wanted to be friends with women because I just enjoyed being around women. I just liked hearing their conversations. Um, I used to watch Get Ready With Me's. I didn't watch story time or anything like that yet, but I used to love getting ready with me's and stuff like that, uh, DIYs and stuff like that. I didn't, and the only kind of men content I watched back then was, you know, podcast kind of stuff, gaming, that kind of stuff. But outside of that, I watched women mainly. And um, eventually I did end up getting another girlfriend um, as I got older. And I loved it. I loved being with her because I still could be my feminine self with her without being too feminine. There was a lot of masculine that I could put in there, but there was a part of me that wanted to do the, you know, hey girl, you know, girl, I can't believe, you know, I just, I know that sounds silly. You know, the flamboyant stuff seems like it's a, it's a mockery sometimes of women being like, hey girl, and stuff like that. But to me, it was just fun. It was just a, a fun way to express myself in a, in a way that I felt like I could connect with the women instead of making them objectified and always thinking they were objects that I needed to go take to my bedroom and do that. I just got so sick of that. You know, I just wasn't that kind of guy. I never was, you know, even though I was really heavy in the adult content and I was an addict, I was not for getting a woman and taking her to my bed immediately. I only did that stuff because yes, it feels good, obviously, but I never wanted it like as a, that makes me more man. I used to get in arguments. I remember in high school uh, with other men, because they would be like, man, you need to get some, you know, JJ and stuff like that. And I would argue, be like, I, I don't care about getting that dude. Like it doesn't, I didn't feel like that made me more of a man because I could get more women to sleep with me. Not that I could, if I wanted to, but there was no part of me that even like fiend for that. I didn't care that much. And I don't know if that has something to do with me being overweight or a lot of me being short. Um, and that maybe has something to do with it too. I'm short. I'm very short. So a lot of men were always hollering at me. So I guess maybe I maybe gravitated more towards women because I was normally around the same height as women. A lot of girls were my height. I wasn't taller than a whole lot of women. I was barely taller than a lot of women. And even today, I'm barely taller than a lot of women. I'm about the same height as a woman sometimes. In fact, all the women I work with are either taller than me or the same height as me. I don't meet a lot of women that are extremely shorter than me. So maybe that's why I gravitate toward them because every man I talk to, I have to look up. And so these these things, I'm sure, play a role. And I think that's stuff we got to look into as well. But anyway, continuing on, I get a girlfriend and I start to get more feminine and I'm enjoying it. And I get to be friends with girls because once again, I have a girlfriend, I'm engaged. So I, I, I get to hang out with women and just be myself, which is not always the most masculine thing. <laughs> not that I don't like playing football. not And I love playing basketball. I don't know if that's a, those are manly, manly things, but I love playing basketball. I love lifting weights. I love all that kind of stuff. And those aren't inherently masculine stuff, but I don't find a lot of women that love football, basketball, sports. I love um, and the weightlifting. I love sports. I love everything about sports. Um, but anyway, continue on. Once she ended up breaking up with me, this is where I really questioned myself. And I mentioned in the video why I said I was no part of no re why I was not part of the LGBTQ. Um, I was. I was really in that group. I was in groups. I was in Facebook groups. I uh, talked to people who were bisexual, homosexual, trans. I have I had a trans friend um, and I, I, I was really in the community and I didn't judge the community. It's not like I hated being in the community. I just I was in there um, at the time. I think I was going aromantic, asexual. Um, but a lot of people were calling me uh, gay and bisexual because I would tell them, even though I was really into adult content, I didn't like that part of me. I hated how much. I objectified women. I mean, I, I couldn't stand it. And same thing with the men. I hated how much I objectified men. 
I only cared about men and their size and I only cared about women and their butts. And I hate it when I looked at um, adult content because it would break people down into that. And I hated it so much. Like there's nothing wrong with looking at a woman and saying, wow, she's super beautiful or looking at a man going, wow, he's super beautiful. Like you just enjoy them aesthetically. But when you break them down into just um, objects and you just dehumanize them, it was making me sick. And I would tell people this and I would tell people that I don't look at girls' butts. And if a girl wore a skirt that was too short, I know today if you tell a girl her skirt is too short, you're 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 going against that. You're you're actually objective. I, I don't understand it now, but it's like you're actually objectifying her now. Back then, I would tell girls you should wear a longer skirt because you know other men out here are going to be looking at that. And you know, I, I got no problem with that's what you want to do, cool. But I would just be like, you know, maybe you could wear a longer skirt, or I would tell other people that like, oh, I'm not going to look at her because her skirt's too short. I mean, I'm I, I'm I'm not going to be able to look at her without sexually objectifying her in my own mind. And people would say that I was gay because of that. And they would say, are you sure you're not confused? And like, no, I just don't want to look at a woman like that. She wants to wear that fine, but I'm not going to look. So I don't know if a girl has a big booty or she has a small booty, especially if she's wearing something that shows us that. Now, she's just wearing jeans and I happen to look over. It's different. But if I'm specifically looking at her to see how big her butt is, I didn't do that kind of stuff because I just hated that. And, and inherently looking at adult content made me feel bad bad enough. So I wasn't going to do this to women out there. And so that's where I really got pushed. And that's that was probably the most confusing part of my life. And that was around 27, 28 years old, where I was like, man, am I this? Uh, am I homosexual? Because at that time, like I told you guys, I really liked the whole painting fingernails. I never painted my fingernails, but I, I, I liked it. I liked seeing women put on um, makeup. And I liked seeing women put on colored nails. And when I saw men with colored nails, I thought it was cool. I was like, man, that's a good way to express yourself. Like I thought expressing yourself through colors and stuff like that was kind of awesome. But as you can see, I'm a pretty boring person now. I just wear a polo and dark polos, uh, pants, shoes. I don't really dress out like that. Um, it, I don't know. There's always a part of me that was like questioning myself. And I think about 29-ish even, even honestly, even about two years ago, about a year and a half, two years ago, I was cool with people thinking I was really feminine. I didn't care about, I, I still enjoyed being feminine. You know, like, I like being like, hey, girl, tell me the T, how big is he? You know, when I'm talking to other girls, they're like, how big was his, you know, thing and stuff like that? And was it good? Was it that? Because I didn't find that stuff, like, appalling. Um, like I said, I was in the men. And stuff like that and just their body parts and stuff like that but and i didn't mention this earlier but when i played football and stuff like that i was enamored by you know guys body parts because i would be like why am i not that big and i was always comparing myself and sometimes i like i like looking at them um good looking man i like looking at them stuff like that and so i know you're thinking based off this whole video that i'm gay or i'm bisexual and here's the thing i'm okay with somebody saying that i struggle or somebody saying that I have bisexual tendencies. I I can live with that. I'm not offended by that. You know, my problem when it comes to bisexuality and homosexuality is that I have to be that. Just because some part of me was growing up with attracted to men sexually that, oh, I have to label myself as bisexual now. And I have to live that way. And I don't think that is right. Even if you have those tendencies growing up or you still that way today, doesn't mean you have to live that way. Just because I can gravitate towards women and men doesn't mean I have to live as a bisexual. I can be married like I am now and be a father and be all these things. And even though I had a past that would tell me that I am gay or homosexual or bisexual or whatever they want to call me, it doesn't mean anything to me. And I don't think it's right when you see kids doing these kind of things to be like, oh, he's going to be gay. And then you raise a young man as gay and say he has to be with a young man and he has to marry a young man. And he has to do all these things because that's who he is now. And it's just like, I, I don't think that's right. I grew up just fine. Um, question the little things, but I'm like, you know what? I think I'm just a man who's also attracted to men, but I don't have to live that out. I don't have to live that way if I don't choose to. And I'm not going to, for nobody's going to force me. And e I don't even care about the validation. I don't need anybody to walk up to me and be like, yes, you're bisexual. And then I got to join that family in living that. I don't think that's right. I think you can be a bisexual man and be buried, right? and um, live that life. And I never, I'm never going to label myself as bisexual. If I told you, if I tell you my story and you hear this, you're going to think I'm bisexual. 
but it is what it is. My point being is I don't live that way. I still live in a way that I feel is correct. I live in a way that isn't giving in to all my sexual fantasies or a way that's just giving in to whatever I feel at the time. Even though I have this past and I do have these tendencies, I don't label myself and I don't put myself in that because once you get into this group, it feels like you can't come out of it. You can't question anything. I'll, um, I'm gay, so I have to be gay and I can never not be gay. If I say I'm not gay, then that means I was bisexual. And then if I make a story and tell you guys this story and I do all these things and now I come out as bisexual, even though I'll still get validated, it feels like nothing's real. It feels like everybody was telling me I was gay and I should have lived in that. And now that I feel like I'm not, and I'm attracted to both. Oh, then all that was a lie. All that stuff back then was a lie. So why were y'all validating me so much if none of it was really true? It was just what I was feeling at the time, you know, or it's just a tendency I have. And I think a lot of people have a tendency to like both genders, like to like males and female. I mean, I'm sure there's people who think about, oh man, she's really hot. You see women talk about it all the time. I see straight women talk about women all the time. And I have, I know, well, straight men don't tend to come out and talk about men because you get judged, but I don't really care. I don't know. I, I hope I made sense, but my whole point is that I don't ever want to be labeled and nor do I want to be forced into a group. I have tendencies to like both, but that doesn't mean that um, I have to force myself to be in this group and go put on rainbow colors and rainbow my hair and go go to a pride parade. What is it? What do you? How do you have pride in something if you were literally born that way? If you were born with those tendencies regardless or something happened in your past that makes you tendency towards that. That's not something I'm like, yes, I got to shove it down people's face. And I got to be like, yes, you got to accept me as bisexual. Like, I, I think that's all unnecessary. If that's who you want to be and you truly accept yourself, you don't need a pride parade for that. You just accept that's who you are. And you don't necessarily have to live in that way. I don't. I don't live that way. I live my life as a man who's married to a woman who's having a child. I'm cool with that. I get to live however I want to in this way, right? And so I don't like, that's why I don't like the thought of being forced into the LGBTQ. And that's why I left that community and I don't ever want to be a part of it. It's too much validation and it's too much forcing me to have to go a certain way. I have to act a certain way. I have to be a certain way. No, I like the life outside of it. And that's just how I feel. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section. If y'all care about this video, if you if you disagree, cool. I'm really, really, I really want to have this conversation. I don't have a problem with the LGBTQ. I don't mind having the conversations. So let's talk. All right, I'm out of here.